Hello, my name is Jared Stone, and I am a Senior Technical Curriculum Developer here at Jitterbit. Now, today we're going to dive into a tutorial that is a part of our Jitterbit Basics series. Now, this series will show you how to quickly connect to your data systems using the Jitterbit Harmony platform. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio to leverage Jitterbit's upsert activity for using the Salesforce connector. And then what we'll do is probably create a very basic operation using that connection. Now remember, a Salesforce upsert activity both updates existing data and inserts new data into the Salesforce endpoint and is intended to be used as a target to consume data in an operation. Okay, well, to start, we need to navigate to the Cloud Studio. You can see on screen I'm there already, but you can access this through the Harmony portal at login.jitterbit.com. Now, once here, I've already created this project, but over here on the right-hand side, you can see where you could create a new project. But I'm going to go ahead and dive straight into this, so I'll click View and Edit. Okay, so once in here, you can see I'm in a new workflow here, but I'm going to start building out this very simple operation. Like we mentioned in the introduction of this video, we're going to be doing an upsert. And what we'll be doing is reading some data from an FTP that we have, just a little test file, and then we'll be upserting that data over to our Salesforce instance, okay? So, you can see over here on my FTP, I have a, a test file right down here that I'll be grabbing and then just sending, the, sending that data over to my uh, accounts area within my Salesforce or refreshing there showing 29, okay? So, back over in Cloud Studio, let's start by... Uh, doing a little bit of configuration of the activity. I've already got my endpoints configured for the FTP and Salesforce, but I can dive in and show you a little bit of information. If you want to dig deeper into this area specifically, check out one of our other videos in regards to the Jitterbit Basics series where we dive into um, how to configure the endpoints. But it's very simple. You can see here on screen where you just provide the endpoint name, the host, security options are there for you, username and password. I've variableized all of these using project variables. I've leveraged those in all of my areas that I'm using usernames and passwords and, and so on. So testing that is always a good thing to do. You can see I have a successful connection there. But if I go back to the main area here. I can click on FTP endpoint and I'll be reading this data. So I'll just click on read, drag and drop that over to the canvas. All right. So you can see the first thing that comes up is an operation name here where I could come in and maybe rename this FTP to SFTC absurd. Okay, so we have named that. So now let's go ahead and configure this activity. So I'll double click into that endpoint. And then the area that I want to focus on is the get files area. Remember, this is where we're going to be grabbing or getting that test.csv file. So in the get files area, I'll say test.csv. Then click next and finished. And just that simply, I've configured that activity. So now we want to go ahead and look at the target side of things, or in this case, that would be the Salesforce side of things. Like I mentioned, I've already configured this Salesforce endpoint, but once again, I just need my server information, username, password, and security token. You can see, once again, I've verbalized all of these areas. So I can test this connection just like I did a moment ago, and you can see successful connection just to verify that information. But the main thing we want to do now is go ahead and configure that activity. So over here on the right-hand side of the component palette, let's click once. 
we'll be doing an upsert. So let's find the upsert activity. Click, drag, and drop that over to the operation area. Okay, so we'll go ahead and view edit to configure this. The object that we need to reference is the account object. We'll go ahead and click next there. We'll use the ID for the external ID. And there we can see the schema and we'll go ahead and click finish. So now our source and target are configured, but now we need to make this data communicate with each other. So to do that, we need to create a transformation. So take your mouse, hover it between that FTP and Salesforce uh, endpoint, and click once and select new transformation. You see here we can start with a transformation name and you've probably seen in some of the other areas like the activities where you can name those as well. Now it's always a best practice to name them uh, in a informative and descriptive manner. In this case we'll be um, we'll be relatively descriptive but we'll say something like FTP to SFDC upsert. But that's always a good thing, is that you're informative and descriptive, not only for yourself, but if you're working in a team atmosphere with other people, that allows uh, much more effectiveness and efficiency as far as the integration projects go. Okay, so you can see on the left-hand side here, this is my source side, the right-hand side is the target side. So nothing here on the source just yet. So let's go ahead and click Define Schema, and then we will select Create Flat. Now what we'll be doing here is manually creating a few fields that will be in just a moment mapping over to certain fields that are over on the Salesforce side. So let's go ahead and create a few fields. We'll start with maybe company, let's say country, a couple more here, phone. And last one, facts. So that should be good for us. And you can see that schema being built over here on the right hand side as well. Um, notice that you can change the type. So, you know, based upon uh, the situation that you're in, you can change the type. And in this case, string is just going to be perfectly fine for me. I could also rename the schema name if I wanted to, but I'll go ahead and click save changes. Okay, so let's start by mapping from source to target uh, some of these fields, all right? Uh, I cannot leverage auto mapping, which is a, a really great capability, not in this case anyways, because auto mapping is based upon the similarity of field names. My field names in this case aren't exactly alike, but because I understand some of the fields over within my Salesforce instance on the account, I can do that manually, okay? so. We'll start by kind of going down the list here. Looks like I see my city here, so I'll take city over to billing city. I saw country just below that, so country to billing country. And then phone to phone. All right. So you can see here that all of these have been mapped over. If you were to hover on those source fields, you can see that gray line that comes up. Also over here on the far right hand side, you can view mapped fields. Maybe to consolidate that a little bit, making that a little bit easier for us to see. And you can see the purple line letting us know that those fields have been mapped. Once again, another nice indicator showing you uh, what fields have been mapped from source to target, especially when you're looking at a large number of fields. Okay, but everything right there looks really good. So we'll go ahead and return to the workflow. And just that quickly, we have built out uh, the source activity, uh, the target activity, and then we moved in and created this transformation. So now what we want to do is go ahead and click the, re the three dots in the right-hand corner of the operation, and we'll go ahead and deploy and run. So sending this data to the cloud through the, through the deploy option, and then it's going to run or execute the operation for us okay you can see that that's been submitted right here in the lower left hand corner there of the operation it's now been received and here in just a moment if everything goes all right 
it's going to let us know that this was a success. In the case that something goes wrong, it's going to let us know that this was a failure. And essentially, this is just a quick access to the operation log for this particular operation. Okay, and you can see this was a success with information. So if I click that, you can see it pulls up uh, my operation log where I can detail into that and see some information. That's extremely helpful, especially when you have a failure that occurs. Okay, so remember, just to recap, what we were doing here is we're reading a test file, uh, a CSV file from over on our FTP. So we were uh, taking that data and then upserting that to our accounts area within our Salesforce org. Showed you that a little earlier, 29 accounts there. You see that at the bottom. If I go and refresh, you can see I have 30 accounts now. So if I jumped over here to my FTP, remember there's the test.csv file. So that record right there is now over on our Salesforce org in the account. And there it is right there. So I could detail into this. You can see all of that account information. So account name, billing address, phone, everything here within the appropriate place. Now, always remember that for deeper training opportunities, you can check out our learning platform, Jitterbit University. You can access this at university.jitterbit.com. One thing to keep in mind is that you will need an enrollment key to access the training content. And you can get this information from either your customer success or alliance manager. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for this micro learning. I hope it's shown you both the simplicity and the power of the Jitterbit Harmony Cloud Studio.